This is KGW News at Sunrise. We start this hour with breaking news in the race for president. Nikki Haley expected to drop out of the race later today. That leaves former President Donald Trump as the last person standing for the Republican nomination. And take a look at these videos out of Bellevue, Washington. You can actually see a plane falling from the sky, a parachute easing the landing there. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Head on sunrise, what officials say caused that plane to go down. Plus. I like that's really engaging, both mentally and physically. And we all learn to trust each other and the horse and the lunger and learn how to move with the horse. And it's a lot of bonding. She's talking about horse vaulting. Hmm. Horse vaulting. That sounded like a pama horse, but that's a horse. <laughs> yeah, that's a real, that's a real <laughs> live horse, Rod. Uh, and horse vaulting is basically gymnastics on a horse. We're going to hear from the local team that's making their mark in this sport coming up a little bit later on Sunrise. Yeah, gymnastics is hard enough, but do it on right. a horse that's moving and trotting like that? Uh, no, seems no, absolutely. Dangerous. I think so. Hey, glad you're here with us. Rod, what do you got weather-wise? Well, I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, we're dry this morning. Big story is it's a cold start. So big time winter coats, jackets, gloves, hats, maybe all that. 33 out at the airport where it has been down to 32 is actually one of the warmer spots. So look at all the 20 somethings. There's 26 in Hillsboro. Beaverton's 27, 26 up in uh, Battleground out in the Sandy. The coldest morning we've had in quite a while. 26 degrees in Salem. We have widespread heavy frost out there. We may start to develop some fog pockets around, but moving forward, all dry and generally getting into partly to mostly sunny skies. And again, with the sun, we will stay well below normal for this time of the year. 43 at noon. I have the high for Portland reaching 48 degrees. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Rod. Top story this hour here on Sunrise. Breaking news on the race for president. After a disappointing showing on Super Tuesday, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley is expected to announce today that she's ending her campaign for the Republican nomination. NBC News is confirming this decision based on a source who's familiar with Haley's plans. Her exit sets the stage for an election year rematch between former President Donald Trump and current President Joe Biden. Nikki Haley is expected to speak about this coming up at about 7 o'clock our time. From dropping out to jumping in, former Republican candidate for Oregon Governor Christine Drazen is back in the world of politics. Drazen announced last night that she's running for Oregon's 51st House District. For more on this, we bring in Devin Haskins live from the newsroom this morning. Hello there, Devin. Yeah, so this was a seat she previously held. Drazen held this seat from 2019 until 2022 when she resigned to run for Oregon's governor. She eventually lost a close race to Governor Kotek. In a statement posted yesterday announcing her candidacy, she says, I cannot in good conscience remain on the sidelines as Oregon's leaders push our state further into decline. Oregon's House District 51 covers parts of Clackamas County, including Canby, Estacada, and Sandy. It's currently represented by Republican James Heeb. He took over Drazen's spot when she resigned, but has also faced some legal troubles during his tenure. You may remember in August of 2022, he was arrested at the Clackamas County Fairgrounds for interfering with the peace officer. He was never charged. In the Oregon Capital Chronicle, he was quoted as saying he was surprised by Drazen's announcement. And looking at the Secretary of State's website, it does not show that Drazen has officially filed the paperwork for the House seat. In any case, any candidate needs to do that by March 12th to be put on the May 21st primary ballots. True. All right, Devin Haskins live with that update from our newsroom this morning. Also, I want to give you a quick reminder. Uh, this is specifically for voters in Washington. You have a little less than a week now to turn in your ballots for the presidential primary. You need to put them in a drop box or have them postmarked by 8 o'clock p.m. next Tuesday. That's March 12th in order for your votes to count. You also need to select a party affiliation on the outside of the envelope. It doesn't count unless you do that. Come November, though, you can vote for anybody you choose, regardless of party. A bill that will require manufacturing companies to give people and businesses the tools, parts and information needed to fix electronics is now headed to Governor Tina Kotek's desk. KGW's Alma McCarty spoke with the bill's sponsor and a repair shop to learn a little bit more about it. When your device needs repair. People bring us technology problems, we connect them with technology solutions. You might pay a visit to Roman Godin at Hyperion Computer Works. Freelance tech help, because 
not much of that available. Roman's got the tools and the skills to fix a variety of electronics, but as an independent repair provider, he isn't always given all the parts or even an instruction manual. There have been times where we're working on a very new device and there's no information about it. There's no documentation. Nobody's done a YouTube video on how it comes apart and maybe the design is a little weird. The document exists, it's just being deliberately withheld. Withheld, he says, by certain consumer electronics manufacturers. This creates a disadvantage for small businesses or handy consumers. Oregon's Right to Repair Act aims to fix it. So basically, if a manufacturer has an authorized repair program or a repair program of any kind that makes parts and especially like documentation how to do the repair, they're making that available to anybody, then they have to make it available to everybody. You still can offer it in-house and a consumer may choose to do that. You can still offer it through your um, authorized dealers, but we're also saying you need to provide that repair opportunity to small independent businesses in Oregon or self-repair. State Senator Janine Salmon, the chief sponsor, says this all comes down to saving Oregonians money and saving the planet. So if we're able to make phones last longer, then we're creating less waste. There's 170 computer chips in our cell phones. We need to think about the resources that we are utilizing in technology and how we need to save those resources. Critics of the bill said earlier this session they have concerns about device safety and security. Here's John Perry, who works for Apple. It is our belief that the bill's current language around parts pairing will undermine the security, safety, and privacy of Oregonians by forcing device manufacturers to allow the use of parts of unknown origin and consumer devices. Senator Salmon telling us she disputes this, and there are protections around safety in this bill. Roman says he's looking forward to consumers having a choice. They'll, they'll hopefully get a, get a better range of options for what parts we install for them. Alma McCarty, KGW News. Our next story this morning comes from the Seattle area. So take a look at this video. Neighbors caught this video for us, uh, catching it on camera. A small plane you see right there falling out of the sky. It's not plummeting to the ground though because you can see the plane actually had its own parachute. <laughs> That's a good hmm. idea, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Great idea. Parachute on the plane itself. Uh, this all happened around five o'clock last night in the Newport Hills neighborhood of Bellevue. That parachute was an absolute lifesaver for both the pilot and their passenger. This particular plane is equipped with a parachute system. It's called a CAPS system. They were talkative. They were up walking, everything. Yeah, police say that the two people on board were actually on a training flight from Renton when the engine failed. Again, uh, not only were their lives saved by that parachute, no one was even hurt. Wow, that is crazy. And also the parachute yeah. part. I've never seen a plane that I guess, you know. I mean, outside of a James Bond movie, I haven't either, right. honestly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but you know, if the sales guy, now would you like the parachute option with that plane? Yes! You know what? I'm more of a, I'm like a risk taker. Are you? And I can Are, see myself not checking that box, but geez, after watching that video, I'm rethinking that decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever costs are come up with the money. Uh, we have a dry day. We still have a, a chilly day, but I tell you what, it's taken some doing for us to get out of the cold batch of air that brought all that snow to the coast range, and all that snow to the Cascades, and snow at times even in lower elevations, as we know. Uh, but we are now dry. The winter storm snow that was down in southern Oregon yesterday, that has fizzled and dropped southward into California and Nevada. Um, and we don't have any precip on our forecast until we get into the overnight hours of Friday and going into Saturday morning. So traveling this morning, just kind of a reminder that we've been melting snow over both the Coast Range and the Cascades and other elevated mountainous areas across our state. So um, the fact that we're so cold this morning, you would assume there's some black ice and some icy spots uh, awaiting on some of those roadways. So just use caution. This is the Coast Range, 28 degrees, US 26 at Quartz Creek, and there's the 1400 foot Sunset Highway. Again, the pavement's clear. You can see the roadside snow, it's 24 degrees. So again, just be smart and realize there could be some icy patches around. Government camp, it's cold everywhere. 18 degrees up at government camp this morning with, uh, of course, a well plowed Highway 26, that snow covered up there. Here are the temps. Bend has been down to 10, now up to 12. The Dow's at 28. You folks in uh, Salem, good morning. 26, 27 up in Kelso. Seattle's in the 20s this morning. Everybody on the map, well, Portland's the one spot that's not freezing, 33, but the airport has been down to 32 this morning. 
Future cast shows there could be some low clouds and fog banking. If this were exactly correct, we'd see it near I-5 and then over on the east side uh, around mid morning at 9 a.m. I haven't seen any widespread fog, but the fact that again, we don't have any wind. The temperatures colliding with the dew point. That's why we have frost. And so you would be looking for the potential of some fog out there. Just want to show all I want you to get from this map is that we are dry. I don't think there's even going to be any traces of moisture up over the coast range that that suggests. So everybody's going to see partly to mostly sunny skies after any fog that develops. The winds are light. The winds are even light up on Mount Hood at six to seven thousand feet now through the gorge. So virtually little to no breeze at all today. McMinnville 48 degrees. Corvallis the same. Partly to mostly sunny skies coming. Similar numbers up in southwest Washington. It shows Longview at 46, uh, 48 in Battleground and Vancouver. Portland hit 47 yesterday, which was our forecast high. Today we'll see if we can do one degree better at 48. Could at 50 tomorrow. And if we could get up to 58 on Friday, which would be considered normal for a sunny day this time of the year, that would feel great. And then we feel so wonderful about ourselves and life in general. And then you wake up Saturday morning, the rain's back. <laughs> <laughs> the rain's not a bad thing, but we could use some dry weather too. We have a surplus that's about seven inches in the water bucket for this winter <laughs> season so far. It's quite the wet cycle you've got going on there, Rod. Yes. <laughs> uh, hey, let's take a quick look outside right now on the roads. That's where Patterson is hanging out this morning behind the wheel of Drive 8. Uh, he's out right now near uh, Burnside and 162nd on the east side of town. Uh, the bottom line is this, for most areas, you're waking up to a lot of fog this morning. So uh, keep that in mind as you head out the door.